candles are one of the most enjoyable affordable and readily accessible luxury items i love candles but should i make my own candles yanka yes you should candle making is a fun activity handmade candles are a great gift especially because you know what's in the candle you decide what to put in your candle and you can customize scents vessel and label you could have so much fun that you actually have found a new hobby or even start a side hustle and who knows maybe later on it can turn into a profitable business the first step is to decide what type of candle you want to make pillars are candles that stand on their own without any type of container Female or male naked body and bubble candles are perfect example of very popular pillar candles. Container candles are candles that you create inside of a glass jar, metal tin or any type of container. Votive candles are small candles that are designed to sit in small glass containers. For today's guide, we're gonna make a container candle. Let's start now with the elements of a candle. The first is your candle jar. You can get creative with your candle jar. Today I'm using the Cambridge Medium Pink from Aroma. The first step is to clean it with some alcohol to prevent having dust in your wax. The next element of a candle is the wick. There are many different types of wicks. Because this is a beginner guide, I will recommend starting with a cotton wick. I'm using the Wicks by Luxury Candle Supply LCS 70. What type and size of cotton wick should I use, Yanka? I'm glad you asked. The type and the size of your wig, it will depend on many factors. First of all, the dimension of your jar. Second, the wax that you are using. And third, your fragrance. A good starting point is to check with your supplier. A reliable supplier usually has all the information you need. So you start choosing your jar. Then you check what is the recommended wick for the jar. Also, you have to decide what type of wax you're going to use and research what type of wick works best with your type of wax. Seems like a lot of work. But it's not. And if you think about it, if you do these steps earlier, you're more likely to make a better functioning candle from the beginning. The next step will be your wig sticker. It's important to secure your wig because as the candle will melt on the bottom of your jar, your wig will eventually shift, making it less safe to use. Safely securing your candle wig is essential in order to make a safe to use quality product or gift for your family. You could also use a hot glue gun but please do not use melted wax. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave me a comment. It helps me to make more videos to help you. It's a win-win. Now I'm using my wig holder. It's very important to keep the wig straight, otherwise you might get an uneven burn. There are many different types of waxes and it's up to you to decide which wax you want to start with. Because this is a beginner guide, I'm going to use Nature Wax C3, 100% soy wax. Now it's time to get the scale. Tear your purine pitcher and then put the wax into the purine pitcher. Mm. 
My jar holds 160 grams of wax. And the best way to melt your wax is using a double boiler. So put some water into a pot. I use this pot just for candle making. And I put my purin pitcher. And don't forget to put your thermometer as well. You always want to check the temperature of your wax. It's very, very important. Now it's time for the best part. Today I'm using Prosecco Rose from Aroma. It's an amazing scent. A good starting point for your fragrance oil is to use 8%. Then once you test, you can go a little bit higher or a little bit lower. And this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm adding 8%. And the best way to put your fragrance is with a chopstick so it doesn't go everywhere. Your best option is to choose fragrance oils made for candle making. Now my wax is fully melted and I'm checking the temperature with my thermometer is at the correct temperature and I can add my fragrance oil and stir for two minutes now I'm checking the temperature again and when it's at the right temperature I can pour my wax into the jar now let's recap the steps but remember to always check the instructions of the wax you're using my candle has set in about two three hours but as you can see, it has some bumpy tops, which with soy wax is pretty common. So what I'm doing, I took my metal skewer and I'm poking some holes. Now I'm getting my heat gun and I'm melting the top part of the, of the wax. So this way the melted wax can cover the uneven top. Quick tip, once I tried using a hairdryer because I didn't have a, I didn't have the heat gun and it didn't work. So don't use a hairdryer. <laughs> Now I'm cutting my wick and remember don't throw away the rest of the wick because you can reuse it. For this project I'm using a metal lid which I think is really cute and don't forget the last part to put the safety label at the bottom of your candle. Even if it's just a gift to a friend, don't skip this part. And here you have it. A beautiful 100% soy candles. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll see you in my next video. Ciao guys!